Hello everyone and welcome to UNESCO Masterclass series on climate change and Pacific Islands. Today we will be discussing on session 4, options for Pacific Islands to make, mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and build their resilience. My name is Shivil Prasad from the School of Engineering and Physics, University of the South Pacific. Today I will be presenting on energy security and renewable energy and alternative energy potential for Pacific Island countries. At the end of the session, you will be able to define what energy security is, describe the geographical location of the Pacific Island countries, and describe the energy mix and fuel supply security for the Pacific Islands as well, as well as identifying alternative sources of energy available to the Pacific Island countries. In addition to that, we should recognize the mitigation of climate change in the Pacific Islands. So before we start, we should know what energy security is. Energy security is basically vital in ensuring economic and social stability as energy is essential for all basic everyday needs such as transportation, education, healthcare, etc. It depends on availability, accessibility, affordability, stability, and uses of energy. Furthermore, the framework for action on energy security. Energy security exists when all people at all times have access to sufficient, sustainable sources of clean and affordable energy and services to enhance the social and economic well-being. Pacific Island countries are mainly vulnerable to problems associated with energy security as most of them are small island nations and some of them have no energy access. For this reason, energy security is extremely important for the Pacific region in order to improve the quality of life and welfare of people there. Lack of energy security is thus linked with negative economic and social impacts of either physical unavailability of energy or prices that are not competitive or are overly volatile, which will be provided in the resource section. All Pacific Island countries, as seen on the map, are small in land area and population, except for Papua New Guinea, with islands scattered widely across a large area of the ocean. If you have a look at the map, you'll see that only 1.8% of the area covered by the Pacific Island countries is land, and the rest, 98.2%, is water. Populations in the Pacific Island country ranges from 1,400 inhabitants on Niue to more than 6 million people on Papua New Guinea. The remoteness and diverse geographical location of these countries makes energy security a big concern for the Pacific Island countries. Pacific Island countries are heavily reliant on fossil fuel imports with currently more than 90% of the energy demands being met by fossil fuels alone. Out of this, approximately 25% is being used to meet power demands, while the remaining 75% is used for transportation. Out of all the Pacific Island countries, only Papua New Guinea has access to indigenous fossil fuels and exports oil. The rest of the Pacific Island countries have zero fuel supply diversity and thus rely on imported fossil fuels to meet their energy demands. Pacific Island countries spend a considerable amount of the GDP on fossil fuels, from a minimum of 0% spent by PNG to a maximum of 70% spent by Kiribati as seen on the graph in front of you. The rest of the Pacific Island countries spend between 5% and 30% of the GDP on fossil fuels alone. The percentage of GDP spent on fossil fuels indicate the vulnerability of the Pacific Island countries to fuel price increases and negative effects this could have on them. The negative effects were noted in 2008 when the fuel price shot over US $140 per barrel Currently, the fuel price fluctuates between US $100 to US $140 per barrel. If the prices do increase, this in turn means that the Pacific Island countries have to fork out more of the GDP to meet 
the fossil fuel demands. Note all the figures I will be using will be from 2012 as a baseline indicator. Added to the volatility of fuel prices, one should con also consider the fuel supply chain for the Pacific Island countries. Due to the remoteness, the Pacific Island countries get their fuel supply from Singapore, mainly New Zealand, Guam, Palau and Fiji, with Fiji and Nauru also importing some from South Korea. Palau obtains its fuel from Guam and Singapore as well. The Cook Islands have no option but to get the fuel supply from Fiji and New Zealand, and Niue gets its fuel supply from New Zealand as, and Kiribati from Fiji. For more detailed information on the fuel supply chain, you can visit the SPC website, which will be given in the resources link as well, which will detail the actual fuel supply chains for all the countries. With this long supply route, the cost of fuel is further escalated when fuel is distributed among the Pacific Island countries and the geographical nature of the island nations only adds further to the price of the fuel due to the additional transportation cost in these countries. This not only adds to the increase in fuel prices, but increases the prices of all products that have to be shipped out to the islands, making energy security not only related to fuel, but other basic needs as well. In order to ensure an uninterrupted fuel supply, Pacific Island countries have to store fuel. Each Pacific Island country has a different level of fuel supply security as shown in the figure, averaging from around 160 days with Nauru accounting for the highest level of fuel supply security at approximately 650 days. The rest of the Pacific Island countries apart from Republic of Marshall Islands and Palau are well below the average mark having fuel supply security of less than three months. This low level fuel supply security indicates low energy security due to the fossil fuel dependency on off Pacific Island countries. This could cause a major problem if the fuel supply chain were to be disrupted by a natural disaster or other foreseen circumstances. Fuel supply is one part of the energy security in the Pacific Island countries. Energy access is another. Energy production in terms of electricity reaching the people is also another issue to be looked at. Electrification rates in the Pacific Island countries range from a maximum of 100% in Cook Islands, Nauru, Niue, Palau, Samoa and Tuvalu to a low of 20% in PNG. One should note that PNG has the highest number of people living in that country, 6 million compared to the low of 1,400 in Niue. In 2011, electricity prices in the Pacific Island countries range widely from US $0.15 per kilowatt hour to US $1.50 per kilowatt hour depending on the islands. The average, which was a combination of residential, commercial and government tariffs, was around US $0.35 per kilowatt hour. The Pacific Island countries are increasingly looking to reduce the dependence on imported fossil fuels. By reducing energy imports, they can have greater energy independence, avoiding potential supply disruptions and being safe from high energy prices and price fluctuations in fossil fuels. At the same time, lowering their carbon footprint. The Pacific Island countries are increasingly looking to reduce the dependence on imported fossil fuels. By reducing energy imports, they can have greater energy independence, avoid potential supply disruptions and be safe from high energy prices and price fluctuations in fossil fuels. At the same time, lowering the carbon footprint. Thus, the Pacific Island countries are trying to diversify their energy mix by using alternative sources of energy in their electrification mix. So what are these alternative sources? The simplest answer is renewable energy resources and technologies such as hydro, geothermal, solar, biomass and wind, 
which are readily available to the Pacific Island countries due to the geographical location near the equator. Renewable energy has a large potential to displace emissions of greenhouse gases resulting from burning of fossil fuels and thereby mitigating climate change. Renewable energy has great potential as nature offers it free and renews it regularly for us. It also provides energy in remote locations or in the urban area or the rural area. It is available at all locations. We only need to harness it using the right technology. In the long run, renewable energy is turning out to be cheaper as the technology to harvest resources matures. It also gives economic empowerment to the countries as well as it reduces fossil fuel imports. Most Pacific Island countries possess RE resources in abundance. In front of you, you will see each Pacific Island country and the ticks mean how strong that renewable energy resource is in the particular country. You can see that most of the Pacific Island countries have an abundance of solar due to the geographical location as well as biomass and wind power resources to harness to add to the energy generation mix. Currently, most Pacific Island countries are using renewable energy in the electricity generation to ensure a more energy secure future. Targets have been set to increase the contribution of our renewable energy in the area of electricity generation to mitigate climate change. These targets can range from a low of 20% to a maximum of 100% to be met by the Pacific Island countries in the year 2020. Hydropower is a proven renewable energy source and is being readily implemented by countries with hydro potential. Hydropower has been providing diversity in electricity sectors for Fiji, French Polynesia, New Caledonia, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Photovoltaics or solar power is also increasing due to the geographical nature of the Pacific Island countries as well as maturing technology. Considering power generation, use of photovoltaics is increasing due to the decline in the cost of PV technology and rising fuel prices. Home solar systems are being used in Kiribati, Tuvalu, Fiji, French Polynesia, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands to provide electricity to remote locations. Grid connected photovoltaics has also been introduced in the Pacific Island countries. With the largest photovoltaic system with a rating of 1.3 megawatt being commissioned in Tonga in July 2012. Grid connected systems were also implemented in Fiji, Federated States of Micronesia, Nauru, Niue, Palau and the Marshall Islands. The latest grid connected system in Tokelau has seen Tokelau leading the Pacific Island countries by being more than 90% renewable energy power sourced. All the electricity generation in Tokelau comes from hybrid systems which integrate solar with other forms of renewable energy. The use of wind power is also on the increase in the Pacific Island countries. Wind power systems being installed in the Cook Islands, Fiji, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, French Polynesia, Hawaii and Papua New Guinea. The Butoni Wind Farm commissioned in 2007 was Fiji's first wind farm with a total installed capacity of 10 megawatts and has already provided a total savings of approximately 2.13 million by 2012 alone. This figure is expected to be much more in 2015. Apart from the above sources, biomass has been used extensively in the Pacific Island countries. Biomass has been used mostly in the form of traditional biomass whereby one goes to collect wood from trees or any other forms of rubbish you can collect which you can burn to provide you with warmth or you can use that to cook your food instead of natural gas. Biofuels derived from biomass can be used for electricity generation or transportation and have already shown great potential in providing fuel diversity for the Pacific Island countries. Some examples of biofuels would be coconut oil mixed with diesel to run diesel generators as well as 
deriving ethanol from cassava or sugarcane. Apart from these sources, Outec, Wave and Tidal have great resource potential in the Pacific Island countries but are currently not viable since the technology for harvesting is not commercial yet. It is still in research state. According to the report in 2013 by the International Renewable Energy Agency on Pacific Island countries, all countries except Kiribati and Papua New Guinea had set targets to achieve 20% to 100% electricity by renewable energy by the year 2020. As of 2013, Tokelau leads the Pacific Island countries in the renewable energy generation with 95% electricity from renewables. Fiji follows in second place with 67%, largely due to its hydropower generation. Papua New Guinea uses 46% renewable energy for power generation, while the fourth place, Samoa, generates 32% from renewables. Vanuatu falls in fifth place with 25%. All the other Pacific Island countries were producing less than 10% of electricity through renewables at the time of the report. This data is from IRENA report published in 2013 and the figures may vary for current status. For more information, you should read up on Pacific Lighthouse's Renewable Energy Road Mapping for Islands by IRENA. I will provide this in the resources section as well. Apart from renewable energy, energy efficiency is also playing a major role in reducing fossil fuel imports by helping reducing the energy expenditure of the country. Energy efficiency measures were implemented by the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat and funded by the 9th European Development Fund as part of the REP5 program in Nauru, Niue, the Republic of Marshall Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia and Palau. Energy efficiency awareness campaigns have also been conducted with some Pacific Island countries and has seen them including energy efficiency in their national energy plans. Energy efficiency is also acknowledged in the fourth and fifth themes of the FACEP to improve energy security in the Pacific Island countries. So how can we help? We can help by sharing our knowledge on climate change and renewable energy. We can help by conserving energy, reducing, reusing and recycling whatever we can. We can help by inspiring others to fight by climate change. Remember everyone, climate change is too big a problem for one person or one country alone. All of us need to come together to mitigate climate change. As we should keep in our minds that nature does not need us, we need nature. And we also need to secure the future for our children as well.